Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the episode of Just Egg Way. I'm your host, George Gway. Today, I'm joined by Joshua Bulma, who is a soccer player at the University of Maryland. Josh, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Yeah, so how's life in College Park, man? I mean, you guys just got that big win against Virginia. Uh, how are things going for you guys? Yeah, it's looking really, really good. Um, team is pumped. Um, it's been a really solid week of um, winning and stuff. So, um, I mean, we came in in the preseason and we were really working hard. And we were really um, looking forward to, you know, all these battles. And it's looking good now. So uh, we um, look to continue that trend and hopefully get another good win this, this weekend against another Georgetown um, side. So, yeah, looking forward to that. Yeah, definitely should be a great game. You know, Georgetown's number one right now, and it's a, a school that's very close to Maryland in distance. Um, so how is it to have fans back in the stands and, you know, being able to play in the, you know, the games with less protocols as opposed to this, this last year? Yeah, it's really amazing. Um, it's surreal. I can't really put it into words, but it's, it's a great feeling having these fans out there. Um, you know, they just keep cheering you on. It's just a, a, a different kind of feeling that when you're on the field, it just motivates you and, and drives you to, you know, do your best. And also, I know, like, all these other teams don't really like to be the guys being kept on by these fans because they could really get in your head, especially the goalies as well. So, um, I mean, yeah, it's, it's really nice to have them back. And I think they've been a really big factor in, in like how we play and and the results that we get at the end of the day. So it's amazing. Yeah, to me, I think you definitely uh, made a good point there. I think, uh, especially in college soccer, there's nothing better than uh, you know, getting the goalies ahead from a fan perspective. Uh, so in terms of this team specifically, what do you like about it so far uh, going into this Georgetown game? Say that again. I didn't catch so, that. What do you like about this team specifically as you guys, you know, come off that big win against Virginia and, uh, you know, go into the game against Georgetown? You know, what's good about this team so far? Um, it's, I think we really have, like, really good um, – quality and stuff. We have a lot of quality on and off the field. So um, I think the rotation is a big part of how we perform on the field because we can bring in as many players and, you know, rest as many guys as the game goes. So um, I think we can really use that to our strength. And I don't know if other teams have the same kind of depth, but um, with us, I think that's the very good thing about the team right now because it's uh, a lot of depth in the team and we can do a lot of rotations we ca which can really wear the other teams out and then give us the advantage to really um, you know um, tire them and then take advantage of the game so yeah I think that would be a good factor for us going into this game. Yeah definitely something definitely important to have and you know, definitely good to wear down your opponents as the game goes on because you know soccer is the longest game out of uh, all the sports so let's backtrack a bit. You know, you played uh, high school soccer at the South Kent School with uh, a yeah. past guest, Alex uh, Njeti. Now, can right. you, uh, take us through how you got to Connecticut from Ghana. Um, so, yeah, um, I, so Njeti came here first, but um, a coach came down. I think it was the Marshall coach or something, and he recruited some players, and then uh, Alex Njeti was one of them. And he wasn't ready for college, so he brought him through high school first, and that was South Kent School to go. And then when Alice came, he was doing very well. And I was I actually played with Alice back in Ghana as well in the same academy. So the academy was talked about, and the coaches really wanted to see what we have back home in Ghana. So the uh, Owen Finberg, the South Kent head coach, came down to you know see for himself, and then. Fortunately, I was one of the two recruits that he saw and wanted to bring up to, you know, the States to play and go to school as well. But um, unfortunately for the other guy, his paperwork didn't go through, but mine did, and that's how it all happened. 
Yeah, so you've seen, you know, definitely two different sides of soccer coming from Ghana uh, to the United States, you know, being fully settled into the United States now. But do you notice a difference in style of play? Because that's something I wanted to know because, you know, Ghana is probably the most competitive uh, soccer country, you know, in Africa. And I was just wondering, is there really a difference? Yeah, I think there's there's definitely a difference. Um, up here is more technical and I feel like – um, the physical the physical level back back home in Ghana is very high and people are really fast and strong, you know, and the game is just really fast and you have to be really um, quick on your feet and stuff like that. Um, but when I came up here, it wasn't much of a challenge as like that. Well, talking from a South um, high school point of view, but um, I feel like in college, it's almost like, the same kind of competition levels, maybe not the same type of players or quality, but it's definitely like similar in terms of the physical and the speed of play and everything. Um, definitely seeing more talents back home so just because um, it's a lot of soccer and stuff like that. And out here, like college soccer, you could, you could tell that they bring in players from international like um, countries and stuff like that. So um, it, it's kind of similar, but I feel like the speed of play and just the physical aspect is more intense back home than it is out here. And yeah, that's what yeah. I have to say. It definitely prepared you well, obviously, that physicality, because when you were at the South Kent School, you were recognized as an All-American. Uh, and you won a national championship. So what was it like to not only, you know, achieve the ultimate goal as a player, but also your team as well? Yeah, it, it was great. Um, I came in my freshman year. Um, we made it to the finals twice and lost in penalties. That was really, uh, that was, didn't go well for me. And then my third year as a junior, um, coach brought in a lot of quality from a lot of different places and the team was looking really good from the start. And I already had a feeling like right from the start in the preseason that we're definitely gonna be able to win like the whole thing this year. Like I had a feeling, but, and it came to pass, it manifested. So I'm, I really, I, I was really excited and glad that I was able to achieve that because I wasn't gonna play high school soccer without being able to win because all these teams that I played on we were really good and then we get to the finals and then so we get unlucky and then lose in the penalties or like some lucky goal or something like that but um after I won in my junior year that was the greatest feeling that I've ever had to be honest and it felt really good and I was really glad and you know I was just trying to win something with the team not specifically myself, but obviously it comes with the individual rewards as well when your team is doing great. So, yeah, it was really um, exciting. Yeah, for sure. And I really admire how your team was able to bounce back from penalty kicks. Uh, my high school team lost the penalty kicks uh, four years in a row. Uh, oh. It's just a horrible <laughs> way to, to go out. But, you know, obviously that's part of soccer. I wish they would just do golden uh, goal. But, um, yeah, you definitely had the right mindset of, you know, having the team uh, accomplishments over the player accomplishments. So obviously with that success, you know, like, like I said, you were an All-American when your team wins the national championship. You're definitely in the eyes of a lot of college recruiters. So obviously you chose the University of Maryland as, you know, you're wearing in your shirt right now. But yes. what made you choose the University of Maryland? Um, so there was a lot of things that came into play. Um, I was looking at other schools as well, but, when I was in high school, one of the things that I talked to my coach was trying to get out early and then go into college like mid-year and then get the experience before going into like the real fall season. So that was a big factor into in terms of what I wanted, what I wanted to do in college and stuff like that. So um, we talked to several several schools and it was only a few that were willing to bring me in early. So, and Maryland was one of them. So, um, you know, I came out here, visited the place and I felt really good. The team chemistry looked really great. Um, the facilities are great. Um, so 
just a perfect place with like diversity and stuff, a lot of diversity. So um, I was really um, excited on my trip when I came out here. I went to, I visited Duke as well. That was the only two schools I was able to visit because of COVID, I couldn't go to the other ones. But, um, and Maryland was really keen on bringing me in early as well. So um, that really, Pushed me and that was what pushed me to choose Maryland and I think like my style of play will fit with theirs too because they do want to keep the ball and you know play at a sprint play um looking forward and you know attacking um uh, with speed and stuff like that so I'm um, looking doing a lot of research and stuff talking to other people who went to college and my high school coach also helped a lot in that process so um yeah it happens to be that Maryland reached out to me once and they were like, yeah, we can really make that happen. If you really want to come in the spring, we can make that happen right now. Um, Duke was also in the process of that, but they weren't very um, active in that area. And, and Maryland was really pushing. So I was like, yeah, why not just make the decision now then wait later? Cause you never know with COVID and stuff like that. So, that's how it all happened. Yeah, it's really interesting, you know, how COVID played a factor in so many college athletes recruiting. Um, you definitely yeah. picked the right one, and you're off to a great start. You know, I saw that goal that uh, you scored the other night, and I think everyone who's listening or watching right now should go check it out. It was uh, posted over the weekend by University of Maryland Soccer. And it's just a great goal to see. Um, so one thing i got to ask about the facilities uh, – do you guys, are you sharing your facility with another team? Because like when I, I went to school in Providence and it was just mostly like the basketball team got their own facility, uh, hockey and lacrosse shared, and then kind of soccer and the other sports, they, they kind of shared their own place. Um, do you guys have your own place to, you know, really be a team and uh, just focus on yourselves? Um, yeah, I think our team house we're sharing with women's soccer and track and field. Um, lacrosse just moved out of that facility because they got a new one and yeah I think we're sharing with these three guys but we have our own fields that we train on just for, just for men's and women's soccer and yeah I think that's about it. Okay so obviously you know you're interacting with a lot of the you know athletes and at University of Maryland pretty much every every team is very competitive and can, can, can compete for a national championship uh, yes. Do you have a lot of interaction with the other student athletes and uh, what's that support like? Yeah, it's really great, um, especially because we we share the same, like last year, we were sharing the same facility with lacrosse um, and track and field and stuff like that. It's really great, like especially when you walk into the training room to get treatment and there's other student athletes receiving treatments or what, um, you know, you, you have people just encouraging you or like, hyping you up about something you did and during the weekend in the games or stuff like that. And it's really like positive vibes every time you walk up in there. And it's just, it's just so much support from everybody. Even if they don't, they've never seen you or talked to you before, they just, you know, want to encourage you or like give you a good luck, like, you know, stuff like that. So it's really amazing to, you know, have other, student athletes invested in the, you know, other sports as well. And they come and they come out to the games as well. Like they show in numbers and, you know, cheer the teams on and stuff like that. So it's really amazing to have that kind of, you know, relationship and stuff. Yeah, I think that's great to have. You know, I think it makes it more fun when, you know, there's so many good teams and more stuff to talk about. And I think you guys can relate to each other what it's like to be on a, a very competitive team with high expectations. I, you know, there's a lot of schools out there where, only one team is really the team at school. And I think that's not a fun environment. Um, mm. But Josh, best of luck uh, against Georgetown. I think it'll be a great game. I'll try and tune in. And uh, I think it'd be awesome to have you and Alex uh, in the national championship, uh, Marshall versus Maryland. But we'll see what happens. But, uh, thanks we'll again. Man. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. And all that. Wish all right. you all the best, too. Have a good one, man. Yeah.